I want to spend some minutes on, on the demand side and the dry bulk space. And because there are a lot of people trying to figure it out, it looking very good. But if we just look at sort of maybe the different continents, if we just start with Europe, has anything drastically changed as a consequence of the war in terms of trading routes, etc.? I mean, especially for wheat production and corn, there could be some potential uh, new trade routes coming up as a consequence. Or Yes, I would say uh, first to set the scene, you can say the most important country in the world for dry bulk is China. Yeah. So China imports around almost 50% of all dry bulk commodities. So the absolute most heavy weighing, uh, can you say, country, uh, and that what we are looking uh, towards uh, uh, is, is China. Having said that, uh, there are uh, things happening now uh, that impacts, uh, can you say, dry bulk shipping, and that comes out of uh, Europe. And that is um, uh, not so much grains as it is actually coal. So um, coal, of course, uh, in many uh, uh, mine was uh, wasn't it outsourced? Uh, what can you say? Yeah. Outfaced? Uh, you know who uses coal anymore? Uh, but the matter of fact is that we use a lot of uh, quite a lot of coal in, uh, in in Europe. Not nearly as much as in Asia, but we actually do use coal in uh, in, in Europe. And what has happened now, of course, is that uh, uh, getting commodities out of the Black Sea is impossible. Yep. Uh, and uh, there's now also a ban in place for uh, for, for coal, which will start in, in August. Uh, that's coming out of the, uh, can you say, out of the uh, the Baltic Sea. Um, and that has uh, that has meant something for the dry bulk uh, shipping, because suddenly what we have seen in uh, the last two, three, uh, four months is that uh, Europe has started to import coal all the way from Australia. And that makes really no economical sense to transport coal half away around the world. Uh, but that is obviously something that has been helping the market, this inefficient allocation of coal. So suddenly we see coal from Australia going into Europe. We see Russian coal that was otherwise go to Europe, go to India. Yeah. Uh, and, we see, um, and we see at the moment uh, India, generally speaking, basically buying left, right and center coal uh, from everywhere in the world because they have uh, they have uh, huge uh, demand and they uh, they are uh, they are very very low on uh, on uh, on their inventories so they buy from uh, Russia they buy from uh, from Indonesia and they buy from uh, from Australia so the whole and then maybe I should just add one more thing which is that China has actually had a ban in place for Australian coal so uh, that means that uh, that coal is also allocated inefficiently so coal is 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 is, is is very much up in the air, and that is, um, of course, adding ton mile means that uh, that the vessels have to sail longer distances to deliver the same amount of cargo, and that is uh, categorically a good thing for the for the ship owners. And this doesn't look likely to, can you say, ease up anytime soon. So you can say you asked about Europe; mm-hmm. it was really yeah. connected as shipping all, all often is uh, worldwide, but it's ha- it, it's having some consequences, uh, 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 and for grains, it's. Little bit the same, uh, but not uh, so, uh, can you say, uh, impactful for yeah. Gold Notion because it's mainly transported on the smaller sizes. But uh, we see some of the same uh, tendencies there. Again, cargo is blocked in. It had to be. It has to be sourced from somewhere else. It means that it has to be transported longer. So, 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 so as sad as it is to say, actually, a war can be a good thing for the for the trading uh, of, uh, of, of 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 ships. But uh, but naturally, uh, 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 we hope this. Mm conflict gets resolved as, as quickly as possible. I, 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 I hope I don't have to say that. No, definitely. So given this market environment, how do you uh, to view spot versus longer contracts? What is the framework now? Where is Gold Notion positioned in terms of how much is fixed and how much is spot? Given that it seems like it should be a good environment for the foreseeable future. Yes, we uh, did last year um, well, I'll take one step back again. Sorry. Normally, uh, there's a seasonality in, uh, in in dry cargo, so it's kind of like a rule of thumb. It's weak in Q1, a little bit stronger in Q2, stronger in Q3, and red hot in Q4. Hopefully, uh, Q3 or Q4. And that pattern uh, was uh, was um, uh, that was how it was last year. Uh, in the beginning of the year, the rates were 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 low, but at the end of the year, they hit eighty five thousand dollar per day. Uh, which is very high when you have a cash break even of uh, of maybe twelve thousand. Um, so what we did last year when we came into the hot period in the in in, in the fourth quarter was that we uh, we started taking deals into this year, 
uh, but only covering Q1 and a little bit of Q2 to kind of bridge yep. uh, the weaker period. So we've had a, a, a quite a significant portion of our fleet locked up in, uh, in, in high paying uh, freight uh, during Q1, and as I say, to some extent in Q2. Uh, but all of these are now being, uh, yeah, obviously the Q1 is over now, so, yeah. so, so these are, are now back in the spot market. Um, and we're quite happy with that because the market has actually developed like that uh, this year, very weak Q1, and now uh, rates uh, on, the, on the Cape sizes are at uh, $33,000 per day. So they have, they have gone up tremendously in the, in the, in the past week. Um, so now to get to your, it was a bit of a long explanation perhaps, but to get to your question, mm. uh, now we are positioned so that we have quite an open book towards what we have expected to be a strong second half. Uh, that doesn't mean we have any ambitions of being pure spot play. We think uh, we should uh, be you know, managing the risk also on behalf of our shareholders to we say, safeguard uh, income and, and safeguard dividend capacity. So we will take uh, ships on fixed contracts uh, and also covering into next year to, to cover for that seasonally weak uh, period again. But we do believe in the market uh, and we do see the highest earnings uh, there when the market spike. So we want to be present in the spot market. Um, and I think that's also our, can you say, contract with the shareholders, if you want yep. to call it that. If you buy Golden Ocean, you buy exposure to the large segments in dry bulk. Uh, so if you believe in the dry bulk market, uh, you will, uh, you will, we will be a great proxy for uh, what can you say what happens in dry bulk. And right now, as you may have noticed, we have overperformed the Nasdaq tremendously. Uh, and the reason for that is obviously that the outlooks are good and that we are making money, but also because we are seen as a kind of a, can you say, inflation hedge. Yeah. Um, whereas uh, inflation is uh, definitely not a good thing and it uh, can lead to a recession and, and demand destruction. Then for shipping, it's a little, well, at least this time around, it's a little bit different because we have very low influx of vessels, as we discussed. We don't need a lot of growth, but in fact, we have a lot of steel and steel goes up in price. Uh, and there's uh, still a big, uh, can you say, uh, demand for, for commodities, which is actually creating, ironically, as it may sound, a safe haven uh, on, on the shipping yeah. versus the value stocks, as we have seen plummet over, over the past uh, yeah, six months, I, sh- I should say, certainly this year. Uh, so that's a, that's a quite interesting uh, dynamics uh, that, um, that uh, hand on heart I had not uh, pictured 12 months ago, but the, this is where we are now. Just the, the last country you didn't mention, but maybe has a story giving the dry bulk space is Brazil. Is there anything to comment there? Yeah, Brazil is probably the second most important mm. uh, country, I will say. Not because it imports uh, commodities, but because it exports com- commodities. It exports iron ore. Um, and uh, the reason why uh, 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 Vale, which is the Brazilian mining company, is so important is because those v- volumes that come out of uh, Brazil... Uh, are mainly going to China. And because there's a long way from, uh, from Brazil to China, it is very important that we see a lot of, uh, of iron ore coming out of, uh, uh, out of Brazil um, because the other big hub is Australia and there's a shorter way from Australia to, uh, to, um, uh, to China, of course. Uh, and this is why actually the seasonality kicks in. Uh, and why we often see Q1 being weak, it is because it's rain season in Q1 and you have open mines where you dig out the iron ore and you can't work uh, as efficiently during uh, rain season. So there's less export from the, from the Brazilian uh, miners uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in base, it, certainly the, particularly the first uh, quarter, uh, but also somewhat into the second quarter. But the reason the market is moving now is because we're actually seeing Vale coming into the into the into the market again with lots of cargos and obviously that is a positive thing uh, because yeah you need to transport that along uh, a long distance so you can say if you want to boil dry cargo down to the most simple uh, can you say uh, drivers you want to look at uh, you want to look at china uh, and you want to look at uh, at uh, brazil and the export and then you want to look at how many vessels are actually coming into the market and all of these are looking uh, relatively favorable admittedly china has stepped down uh, what can you say? It's uh, economic uh, activity, uh, but not enough to worry us. Uh, given, uh, can you say the other the other factors? So, um, so uh, Europe is 
strictly yeah. speaking, uh, for uh, what can you say us because we transport the uh, longer distances, uh, not that important. Uh, 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 can you say normally? Although of course, as we talked about, yeah. it is playing a role now with the with the coal. Um, but the, these three would be my uh, my main um, my main factors to point on. And why I don't point to Australians because they always deliver. They are usually very. Uh, they have a very uh, good guidance and they always uh, uh, perform uh, to the to, to that capacity. But we keep monitoring them as well. Uh, and uh, uh, there are other factors as well. But the three main yeah. ones would, would I would point to, uh, to to what I just said. But do you have a market scenario that you feel can keep you up at night? Do you see any? black swans or any like china could of course like given the COVID situation do you see any scenarios that can bleak the outlook dramatically i mean that, yeah if i could see black swans that would be great <laughs> uh, but um i guess inherently I, I wouldn't be able to see those but of course shipping is uh can you say uh, uh subject to these hundred year events or black swans call them what you like uh, and uh, obviously if we see uh, a catastrophic uh, incident like we saw uh, with uh, a dam that the dam that collapsed in uh, in Brazil uh, some years ago uh, and suddenly overnight you wipe out the Brazilian a lot of the Brazilian export uh, then yeah. you change the 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 the, the game uh, like this uh, obviously if uh, china uh, completely collapses as we said uh, is behind a lot of the uh, Almost fifty percent of dry cargo import. Uh, obviously, that is a bad thing. But I think so. So that will uh, that would be what would keep me up at the up at night. And these events we can't predict. Uh, obviously, we can't. Um, uh, and uh, and things happen. Uh, there's a war in Ukraine. Okay, it turned out to be a you know sometimes yeah. things can also be a a, a positive for shipping. Um, so so uh, so so yeah. But 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 things can definitely happen, and uh, that is also why we must take a certain can you say amount of vessels out on uh, fixed contracts. Why we must keep a lot of cash on the balance sheet because suddenly uh, the situation uh, can change. Um, but yeah, I'm always worried about uh, stuff like this happening. But uh, knock on wood, uh, we won't be seeing any uh, any uh, any of that. But uh, there's there's risk uh, out there, absolutely. 